Hello everyone and welcome to Art Starts Explores. This is week three and our final week exploring contrast. Uh, the voice you're hearing right now is Kay Slater and I am excited to be exploring with you uh, for a final week, both for our final week of Explorers for the year 2020, but also our final week exploring contrast. So uh, in previous weeks, we looked at contrast as a way to um, emphasize, as a way to bring and draw your eye to something. And so you can go back and you can check out those other uh, episodes in our video archive. But this week, we're gonna be exploring contrast by looking at the color gray and different tones of gray. And so this is a bit more, um, this is a bit more of a challenge because we're only gonna be looking at one color. And so for this first exercise that I wanna explore with gray, um, I wanted to, uh, I went and grabbed some paper. And remember, you can always grab paper from the recycling bin. It doesn't have to be nice paper. It can be, um, it can be messy paper. It can be paper that's been ripped. It's, it can be paper um, that has things on the other side of it. Um, and then this week, because I'm going to be using some paint, if you don't have any paint uh, wherever you're making with me today, you can just watch, but I'll also give you some other alternatives on how you can be exploring this, this activity uh, if you don't have paint. Um, and also, if you get an idea of how you want to try and explore what I'm suggesting um, while I'm making, then go ahead, try it out, right? There are no rules. And if you can come up with a different way to explore, then that's great. So some paper, some white and black paint, um, and then a pencil and an eraser. And the pencil and eraser are gonna be a way that I'm gonna show an alternative if you don't have uh, black or white paint. Oh, and I forgot to put down a brush. So you can use your, your finger if you have permission or if you're using safe paint for that, or you can use a rag, or you could use a Q-tip or a stick or really anything that will get the paint across. But if you have a paintbrush, that's probably uh, going to be the way of keeping your hands as clean as possible. Okay, so let's start by exploring gray and contrast. Oh, I'm just gonna pull my chair up here, great. Okay, so we're back in my micro gallery space for this last week. It just seemed appropriate if we're going to be looking at, you know, painting um, different shades or just sorry, different, uh, yeah, different shades of gray. Here, I'm gonna move my little mini character over to the side. Week three, we know it's week three. I'll move that back there. And there we've got a little bit more space. Okay. So do you know what gray is made from or how to make gray? So you could buy a bottle of paint that was gray, but if you have the black and you have the white, you can mix that up and you can make some gray. There you go. I'm going to put a little bit of both. And I just grabbed a container from my recycling bin, right? This is just a, I think it's a coffee lid, right? Don't have to worry about getting something dirty that we're going to, we'd normally be drinking out of, right? This is already going to go into the garbage. And so when I'm talking about shades of gray, I, uh, I'm talking about how much black or how much white there is in in your gray color. And so what we're gonna start by exploring is we're going to explore different shades of gray. So I'm gonna start by putting black on this side of my page. And because I'm, you know, I'm in this gallery space this time, I decided I would also paint a little bit up on the easel. Here we go. Here, I've got some black there. Then if you wanna clean your, clean your brush, um, you don't have to. And here's another trick that I always like to share with people who are learning how to paint is that if you have an old t-shirt, these are, this is a part of some old pajamas that I had to keep paint out of the water. So you don't have to put it down the drain or you don't have to worry about having a whole bunch of uh, dirty water. What you can do is, is you can brush off a whole bunch of the pigment off of your brush. You can do this on a piece of paper as well, but you could just use some fabric to get a whole bunch of the pigment off there. And then when you start putting your paintbrush um, in other colors, 
you're less likely to contaminate it and to get a whole bunch of the other color in there. And you can work back and forth like this until you really need to wash your brush and you need to have a really clean brush. And so having a rag around is always a nice idea. Okay, so on the other side of the page, I'm going to put some white here. You're going to do the same thing. I'm going to put this one down here. Oh, and I had a little bit of black, so I contaminated that one. That's okay. There's a lot of white in that. All right. And then in the middle, I'm going to put a little bit of white and a little bit of black. And that's going to be my middle gray. So that's my idea of trying to have an equal amount of both gray and black on my page there. Okay, so now what I want us to do is I want us to see if we can make steps and how many steps. And if you have a big piece of paper where you can use all the space underneath, I wanna see how many different steps you can go so that you can try um, and, and make a step from how to a little bit of white that you add with the black and then a little bit of black that you add with the white and see if you can slowly incrementally get to this space. So I'm going to turn off my voice for a second here so you can watch what I'm doing. But challenge yourself. See how many steps you can get between each of these uh, shades here. And try it out. If it's, not, if it's not working really well, go back or let it dry. Add a little bit more black. Add a little bit more white and just keep going. This is, this is just a challenge to see how many different kinds we can make. Here, I'm going to put one here. There is no right way to do this. It's really about building the eye to be able to tell how many steps in between. And it, it can get really, really subtle, the differences between each, each step. I think I can do one more in the middle there. Back and forth, back and forth. You see what I'm talking about here? So this one's the, the black that doesn't have any white in it. This one's got a little bit of white. This one's got a little bit more white here. It's got even more white here. And then an equal part here. I think I could probably even do one more step in between those two. You see, I'm just adding a little bit of white at a time, but you might have a different technique. There we go. Okay, so from this step here, from here, I went all black. And then I went one, two, three, four steps before I got into my middle gray. How many steps did you get? And keep going. If you think you can go even more, of a difference between each shade, go for it. Okay, so now I'm going to go towards the white. And so I want to try and get even lighter than this one. Use my, my rag, try and get some of the black off my brush. What do you notice as you're doing this? I find it's way easier for me to mix from black to gray than it is to go from gray to white. Okay, I'm gonna bring some of that gray and put a little bit more white in there. Hmm, I wonder if I can get one more in between. I'm gonna see if I can go between this gray and that white. All right, yeah. 
think I did it. Okay, so for this way, this way I went, from this one to white, I went one, two, three. I only got three in between there. It's a little bit harder. Oh, and I forgot to bring my, <laughs> I forgot to bring it up on my, my board here. I got so excited about the paper in front of me. Okay, I think that was my second lightest gray. And I'm gonna bring a bit more white over to here because this one ended up being pretty gray. There we go, white. And then this color here, I gotta try and match that one. Oh, see, it can be really, really hard to mix gray. That's why this is a good thing to practice and really challenge yourself to see how many steps you can make. Really excellent painters and people who, um, who have a really good eye to be able to tell the difference between um, the incremental or shades of gray can get lots and lots and lots of these tones. Lots of these shades. Okay, and then the next one, a little bit more black. So now I want to try and match. Oh, I want to try to match this one. So I'm going to add just a little bit. I think that was too much black. There we go. Okay. Okay, a little bit darker. Then the middle one, which was 50 50. Black. How's it going for you? Is are you finding this hard? Or are you finding it really easy? Are you able to really uh, come up with uh, different steps along the way? And if you're just watching, right, you didn't have any paint, that's okay as well. Think about it in your head. What would you do as you're watching me? What would you do to make your grays darker or lighter? What would be your technique? Would you start with black and then add white? You start with white when you and then add black. Could you do this in a different way that wasn't using paint? Let me put this here so you can see the difference. Okay, and then add a little bit more black. And I'm trying to match this one. Yeah, that one was easier to mix. Yep, for me, I really do find it easier to go from uh, to go from light to dark than dark to light. Okay, now I want to go a little bit more. I'll go uh, back to this one now. Yeah, didn't need to have very much black at all to be able to get up to that step. Mm. Yep. And one more. Almost all black now, very little white. Oh, I think I could add even more black to that. Okay, I think I can do one more step up on my, my easel here. Oh, it's real close. It's almost black there. But yeah, that's darker than that one. It's slightly lighter than that one. There you go. Okay. So why would I be doing this, this exercise when it comes to contrast? Can you think of a reason? Well, other than exploring gray is really, is really, really fun to see, you know, just to challenge yourself to see how many of these you can do. Um, I'm going to take this color that I just recently mixed and I'm going to put it on top of the second lightest one that I did in the grays over here. I think that was this one right here. Oh, this is the second lightest. So I'm going to go, I'm just going to bring this across. So you can really see a difference between these two colors, even though they're both gray, this gray that had more black in it stands out sharply on top of this gray over here. So even though I only have two colors, all of a sudden I have white, dark gray, light gray, and black. Then if I was to add a little bit of white, There we go. And there we go. So with two colors, we had white, black, light gray, medium gray, dark gray. And so 
that means that if you only had, say, red paint and white paint, you would actually have way more uh, colors or tones to work with um, than just the, the two bottles, right? So you don't really need a full set of paint to be able to, uh, to have all of these different um, shades to work with. And you can come up with something really, really detailed and see all the different dimensions that you can make just with those two colors. So gray is a really awesome, powerful um, thing to practice to see if you can get really good at telling the differences. Um, and then you can start building uh, texture um, and layering so that you can, um, you can just be working in one color. Okay, so I said I could also do this with pencil. So I'm gonna bring this over to the side. And if you wanna keep working with your paint, you absolutely can. But I wanted to show you um, how you could do the same practice using a pencil because way more people have access to pencils than they do um, have access to paint. And you can be trying this all the time. So if you had a scrap piece of paper that you carried around in your pocket next time you're waiting for the bus or you are waiting for a pickup from a grown up or you are waiting for a friend to come over and you just need to spend a bit of time. You can totally just pull out a piece of paper and challenge yourself between a white box, so everything in this box that I drew over here is white, and then everything in this box over here, I'm gonna really go dark. There we go. Okay. Same thing as before with the painting. I'm going to I'm going to put a couple of boxes here. Maybe you'll have even more squares. Or you could cut or rip your paper into smaller pieces of uh, ripped paper and then you could layer them beside each other, right? So then you can move them around. Um, and so you're not you're not constricted by the space because maybe you can come up with a um, a shade that, that are steps in between the boxes you made. But I'm just going to work with this one right now and see if I can fill out from white to the dark of the graphite, the pencil that I drew over here and make the steps in between. Can you do the same thing? How many steps can you make? What techniques would you do? Are you going to go fast with your pencil? or slow with your pencil? Are you going to press hard or soft? Are you gonna draw left to right? Are you gonna fill in the full box? Are you gonna start on the light side first or the dark side first? So even if you do it one way, there's still other things that you could be trying as you go along. Okay, so I went from pretty dark to uh, I did a whole bunch of layers on top of this one. Then I did uh, a whole bunch of layers, but I tried to use a softer mark along here. Now I'm going to try to go from this mid level intensity of gray that I did down to white. And I told you I had a hard time with this with the paint. Uh, I know that I also I also struggle with it with pencil, but it's a really good skill to try and practice because when you start um, trying to draw with pencil, being able to control your shades of gray means that you have so many more colors or so many more, um, 
so many layers of contrast that you can really show dimension when you are when you are drawing. Okay. Yeah, this is what I thought was going to happen. So remember how before I said, uh, um, if you had a, an eraser with you. So this is a really great way of, uh, of also being able to get um, a lighter tone, a lighter gray towards white, is that once you put um, some pencil marks down, you can just erase a little bit of it, of it and then go back and forth, back and forth until you have the lightness you want. So if you're more heavy handed like me, where it's really hard for you to get a really, really light, light mark, some people are really good at getting uh, really soft marks, um, then that's great. But if you're more like me, it's a little bit more challenging. You can uh, use your, your uh, eraser to help you get that light mark. <laughs> I really need my eraser because it's really hard for me. All right, I'm gonna keep marking this. So I wanted to show you one other way and that's smudging, right? Using your finger to rub the gray. There you go, perfect. I feel better about that gray. I feel like that's definitely um, less than this side. There's one other thing that you might have if you've ever bought a drawing kit before or somebody's given you a drawing kit, you might have one of these, which is uh, a kneaded eraser and kind of looks like gray gum, kind of like gray glue. And if you ever had a uh, poster tack, so like that white putty that you put behind posters. So if you have a locker or if you're putting something on the wall and it's kind of this white gum like material, you can use that as well, especially when you're practicing. Um, and what it'll do is it'll lift up pencil mark from the page. It won't be perfect. It will leave some on the page, but that's it. That's an easy way to get an even lighter amount. And then what happens is, is that once it picks up the pigment, oof, this stuff is really sticky. Once it picks up the pigment, you can just um, use make some ghost gum again by uh, by mashing it up with your fingers and then put it back with the rest. And that's a kneaded eraser. So you could use that. You can use a regular eraser. What else could you use? How else could you make it so that you can explore uh, white? to black or dark gray in this case, and how many increments or how many steps can you make in between? So this is one way of exploring gray. I'm gonna clean up my space and then I'm gonna come back in a little bit. And we're gonna try another way of exploring gray using um, a pencil and eraser. But this time we're going to um, use a model or use um, something called still life to um, to practice our, our gray and our contrast. See you soon.